under the water is a unique creature. It's a fresh water sponge. And I think fresh water sponges are incredible. To me, they look almost like a coral or something that belongs in the ocean, yet you find them in totally fresh water environments like this one. These freshwater sponges are totally green, but they come in sort of red and brown and a few other colors. Oh, there's even some red one over here. And I think it is so cool. And I've never seen this much freshwater sponge in one spot before. It's covering all of these rocks. This must be the ideal conditions for freshwater sponge to come, for freshwater sponges to live in, because I've only seen it a handful of times and never as vibrant and abundant as it is here. So let's get under the water and have a look at these freshwater sponges. Taking a look under the surface of this beautifully clear water was one of my favourite experiences on this trip. A couple of years ago, I was making a video in the mountains near Mount Glorious, and as I was walking along a river in the middle of the forest, nowhere near anything else, I saw this strange green thing growing on a log. And as I touched it with my camera, I noticed it was hard, but it looked like it would be spongy and slimy. And after a lot of research when I got home, I discovered what I was looking at was an incredible creature called a freshwater sponge. That was the first time I saw a freshwater sponge and I have rarely encountered them since. But this river down some dirt road near Gladstone had such a large population of these amazing organisms. They are pretty uncommon and it's rare you'll see one in the wild. And it's very rare that there will be this many in one spot. It's one of the most unique and impressive things I was lucky enough to capture on film. I was amazed when I discovered that freshwater sponges exist and how little information is available on them. To me, they are such a unique creature and they survive only in very specific conditions. There are only about 20 described species of freshwater sponge in Australia and they feed on bacteria and other small organic matter. Everything is weird about these creatures. They reproduce either with other sponges or by being broken into pieces which will then grow into new sponges. But they have another unique way of reproducing. And each green sponge you see here is actually a colony of specialized cells that operate independently from each other and have their own specific function, but all somehow manage to work together to keep each other alive. So these colonies we see in front of us produce either eggs or sperm at different times of the year to avoid self-fertilization. And they release their sperm into the water, which is then captured by other sponges which they then use to internally fertilize their eggs. The eggs grow in the sponge and become tiny spheres called gemmules that can survive extreme conditions for long periods of time until they find a suitable area where the temperature and water is all perfect, where they will then attach themselves to a rock or some piece of wood and start to grow again. Because of these unique ways they reproduce and the lack of information on them, it's almost impossible to tell how old they are or how long they take to grow. But they are very slow growing, so this colony could potentially be many years old. They struggle to survive out of their natural environment though, so it's important to leave them in the wild. They are easy to miss or mistake for algae and come in a wide range of colours, mostly in red and orange, brown and these wonderful shades of green. But next time you see a creek, maybe you'll be lucky enough to spot one of these incredible organisms. And surrounding the sponges were also a bunch of empty freshwater mussel shells. I didn't notice any alive ones in this river. So it's possible something happened to the water that killed them all at the same time, as there were an unusual number of the open shells. 
Of course, in the background, trying to keep their distance from me, were all the fish we saw in the last video. From the barred grunter, to the splendida rainbow fish, to the speckled hardy heads, all swimming about in large groups, waiting for the food to wash downstream through the fast flowing water. There were so many of these fish in this particular creek, and it was awesome just sitting here and watching them all swim about in the fast flowing water. And after having a good look at this section of the creek, it was time to head further up. And after heading further up the creek, I discovered a large area filled with loads of freshwater plants. And under the surface were lots of speckled hardy heads darting in and out, checking out my camera and what I was doing in the water. It was really shallow here and so densely packed with all these different plants. Once again, there's lots of freshwater mussel shells in this area. And I thought I was lucky enough to see an intact one, but it turned out it was also empty. I did see the occasional group of Splendida rainbow fish in this area, but the hardy heads were definitely in abundance here. It was such a peaceful spot here, and one of the most beautiful underwater environments I've been to. And above the stream, in the trees, I could hear lots of different bird species flying about and nesting in the trees. This spot was just somewhere I randomly picked on the map, and it turned out to be such a cool place that I spent quite a long time at. And finding those freshwater sponges made this area a particularly magical environment to be in. It was just so beautiful, seeing all these fish and all these plants. And there are so many different plants here, I can't even begin to name all of them. Some of them you might recognize, like the long, thin green plants, they're a type of Vallisneria. But there's so many other plants, I couldn't identify all of them. It's rare to find a creek with so many different plants living in it as well. You normally find one or two varieties of plant. It's usually Vallisneria and Elodea. They usually take over most of the creeks. But in this one, as you can see, there were just so many different types of plant. And so as I headed down the creek again, into a slightly deeper part of the river, we can see lots of barred grunter and rainbows. But there was something bigger here, and I got very excited. Could this finally be a cod? One of the fish that has eluded me every time I've tried to find one. After waiting here for quite a while trying to get some footage of the big fish, I managed to only get a few glimpses of it. And it turned out it was most likely a spangled perch, making their home under this fallen branch, which made the perfect cover for them to feel safe under. This river was so alive. It was a stark contrast from the surrounding environment, which was all very arid farmland. And there was just this narrow bank of trees following the creek. And then in the creek itself, so many different fish and plants and those amazing freshwater sponges. I'm so glad I was able to film this area and see all those freshwater sponges because I've looked online to try and find them and there's very little footage of them online. I've never seen this many in one spot before. So I'm really glad to be able to share them with all of you. And hopefully you learn something about the freshwater sponges and what makes them such an amazing organism. If there are any experts on freshwater plants out there, maybe you'd like to leave a comment and tell me what plants we were looking at in this video. It can be very hard to identify the different types of plants, especially in an area like Gladstone, which is one I'm not familiar with, and I only spent 
a few days in. I hope one day I can come back to this area and investigate this creek and see how it's doing. Because a lot of these creeks tend to dry up. I'm hoping that this one doesn't and those freshwater sponges can just continue on living for many more years to come. It was such a remote area and I'm really glad that it hasn't been damaged or destroyed. I really look forward to coming back here and seeing what condition the creek's in at a later date. Hopefully it's not one of those creeks that will dry out over time and those sponges can just continue living in peace as they have been. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you on our next adventure as we continue looking around the creeks of Gladstone. Until next time, keep it murky.